Okay, come on, girl. Let's go check out the campsite. All right, this is my absolute favorite campsite. It's this awesome ledge site here. And uh, we looked down into the Grand Canyon, or actually Glen Canyon, it's the start of it, uh, which is the start of the Grand Canyon. And it's right over here. So that's the start of the Grand Canyon. And then, hey Sierra, come here girl, over this way. I want to show you over here. Well, oh, we can't see it. It's socked in with rain. I wanted to show you that. Um, here, babe. That Death Valley's right over here. So we, we're basically right above it, looking down into Death Valley, and it's just an amazing view. But right now, we've got a, a rainstorm barreling down this way. It's gonna either rain or snow. It kind of feels like snow. Really windy up here. But right there. Uh, Death Valley right there and it's awesome to see the silhouette of it when um, you know when you can see it it's awesome sunsets right here too so we're gonna go take cover in the truck <laughs> I'm gonna see if I can get the internet going and then uh, once this blows through then we're gonna set up camp I think we'll stay here for a day or two depending on how connectivity is I want to try to get a podcast recorded with Craig and also uh, see if Phil from down to mob wants to record one and then maybe even Baron from uh, you know, Baron Link from Normal to Nomad, he and Elsa Ray. So we'll see, but I love this campsite. I've been camping here before. Come on, see over here. Over here, come on. I've camped here uh, at this exact site before and I just love it. So the, the sunsets and the sunrises are insane. And it's kind of cool to look out that way and see like the, uh, the point that's way out there, or is it right there. Um, you can drive out to the end of that, which is really neat. So the features around here is just what's so amazing. Everything's just gargantuan. And these cliffs with the drop off, I don't know. I don't know what the elevation change is, but it's gotta be over a thousand feet. All right, the stuff is barreling in here quick. And so I wanna get this at least popped out so I can get access to the uh, inverter to charge up my stuff again. Um, I don't have my battery at the moment. I sold my other battery to my buddy Hank. And then the new battery, there was a mix-up at the post office and it didn't get delivered. Well, it got delivered, but it got returned. So that, that battery is coming again in the mail. It should be here, I think, on Wednesday. So in the meantime, I'm just going to charge everything with the inverter in the back here. And uh, wow, this stuff is moving in fast. I don't know if it's rain or snow that's coming in right now, but whatever it is, it's coming in really fast. So I'm going to get this done and then uh, we're going to hop in the back longer than that ghastly anaconda stuck up in Brazil. Mm -hmm. In the cave of El Castillo in Spain, what was it exactly? Cave paintings. Yet more importantly, the oldest cave paintings that we've ever seen. The storm is really coming in. It's looking a lot more ominous. So check this out. It's darkening up a little bit. And I can't really tell on the camera here, but in real life, it's gotten way dark. So we'll see what this is like when it hits, but I think I'll definitely be able to, to test this out, which would be good. So I want to see how this holds up to moisture and hopefully it's rain and not snow, but it's the temperature dropped like crazy. So it's, it's uh it's pretty chilly out uh, but one thing i was gonna say is that if you're truck camping uh, if you have a, a lot of blankets or like a really wide sleeping bag hey sweetie what's up what you doing do we up for the video <laughs> you're the cutest thing on the planet uh what you can do is you can cover your the, the sides of your truck topper and that really helps with the wind and like blocking any wind that's going to be coming through it creates a barrier because like all the wind is slamming into this side of my truck right now and with this um, uh, deal here, with this um, uh, sleeping bag up over the edge of it, it just makes it to where there's, there's a nice barrier over there. And then down over on this side, back in here, you know, I've got like some other blankets sitting around. And then same with, same with over here. I've got some blankets and then same with over on this side. And so if you can do that all the way around, the only place that I don't really have it is up here. But I'm going to take these 
just go like that, I'll be good to go. And so that's a good way to keep the, the cold air out. All right, so look at this is already blowing through. All it was is just a little bit of uh, flurries and some high winds. And now it's, you can see on the horizon there, the clouds are already breaking up. So uh, probably a little bit more flurries here for the meantime. And then it'll clear up here shortly. I'm not sure what tonight holds though, as far as wind and uh, temperatures. I, I know the temperature is supposed to get down to about 30, but I'm not sure with wind. So uh, what I can do is I can bring in my, my little camp stove here. And if I need to run some heat, like some spot heat, you know, I can turn this on real quick do this but just be really careful if you do something like this number one that creates uh, carbon monoxide poisoning and so you want to make sure you have like a window vented or something like that if you have this going and then number two you don't want to like fall asleep with that on for a number of reasons number one you know you could suffocate number two you could light your stuff on fire wake up to a fire and uh, you know both those options really suck so just be careful if you're going to do something like this. I do it occasionally, but I'll just turn it on for like two or three minutes and turn it off. Let it go for about an hour, turn it back on two or three minutes, turn it off and just go like that. And then during the nighttime, I just stack up with a bunch of blankets and I'm good to go, especially with Sierra by me because she's she sleeps pretty warm. So it's nice to have that heater. Oh, <laughs> uh, these, these flakes are getting bigger. Maybe we'll get something good coming in. I don't know if you can see those. <sighs> All the snowstorms this year have eluded me, at least the ones with accumulation. All right, there's a Monument Valley right there. I said it right this time. Check out this fuse. I think it's safe to say another round's coming in. So I'm gonna go ahead and get all the stuff for dinner. And we're gonna pack it into the topper and just call it a night. Sierra's already crashed out. I'm gonna get her her dinner as well. Then we're gonna call it an evening. Definitely chilly up here, a lot more chilly than last night, but of course we're we're up a lot higher in elevation. Excuse me. A lot higher in elevation, so. Well hey sweetie. What you doing? I'm gonna go get your dinner, okay? I think I'm gonna change the locations. Reason being is that the wind is starting to kick up pretty good up here, and it's only it's only 37 degrees and it's noon, so it's pretty cold. And I knew today it was gonna be cold. I thought it was gonna warm up quicker, but it hasn't yet. So I'm gonna to go to a new location, and um, this location has a little bit better wind protection, and it's about a thousand feet lower in elevation. It's a really fun 4x4 to get there. And so Sierra's chilling in the back. Uh, cars packed up, our trucks packed up, ready to go. We're all set, got a good breakfast in me, and uh, now we're gonna jam. I think on the way there, we're gonna listen to Grateful Dead, 30 Trips Around the Sun. It's a really, really good collection that I picked up from my buddy Craig, who got it from his buddy Christo. So, shout out to Christo for the awesome music, and uh, we're gonna jam going over there, but I'll, I'll take some video on the way of the 4x4 trail. It's a lot of fun and some, some, some really cool 
uh, features and all that stuff. And we'll do one last walk through outside here, just so I can show you this area when it's not so stormy or so blown out in the morning with the morning sun, now that it's about noon. So let's go check it out and then we'll hit the trail. Wow. Look at that like potato chip style rock over here. I mean, obviously it's not a huge fall down from like there to, to that little ledge right there, but you still wouldn't want to do it. You'd get hurt pretty bad if not die. Uh, this whole rock is broken back. Look at this, this whole massive section. Wow, look at how that caved off there. Do you hear my voice echoing? I don't know if you can hear it. No, you can't really hear it. But anyway, check this out. This is wild. That's a huge, huge, huge piece of rock. So, all right, baby, let's come over here. There's a lot of, a lot of these big rocks that have uh, calved off here. Like this one right here. Oh, that's cool. See that little tree growing out right there? That, in between those two rocks, there's two trees growing out. That's, oh, there's the third right there. That's really cool. I'm trying not to get too close to the edge because I don't want to be on any unstable rocks that might slide. Because you just never know. I mean, you know, all this stuff is, is caving off here. If you look to the side, get over here. You know, all these things are starting to slough off and like, these rocks down here, all that stuff is sliding off. And I mean, if you go all the way, way down there, I don't know, it's 1,500 feet, 2,000 feet. It's, that's a long drop, man. No one survives that. <laughs> but you know, you, you walk along here and you'll see how these, these rocks are, are broken. And so eventually they're gonna, they're gonna slide off. And, I don't want to be here when that happens. Hey, Sierra, no, 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 over here. Go out on that one. Look how cool this, these twisted trees are. I think it's so cool to see, see trees that are, over the, over the years, that get twisted like this. Unfortunately, this one's dead, but it sure is cool. And all of a sudden it just turned into a super nice day. I love trees like this, like these creepy trees that are in the middle of nowhere and uh, they're growing up solo by themselves. This is another massive rock that caved off or calved off. All right, babe, let's go back to the car or the truck. Come on, Sierra, let's go this way. Let's go to the other side. Sierra, over here. Come on. No, no, no. Slow down. Okay, to give you an idea how big these proportions are, I don't know if you can see it, but right, I think it's right there is my truck. And then walking way out to the edge over there, that's where I was yesterday, showing you all the the um, storms that were rolling in. And last night, it got, it got pretty intense. I mean, and it got cold. I woke up at 2 a.m. and I've been awake since because I got up and it was just like super cold and and everything was iced over inside the topper. So I started to warm it up a little bit, <clears throat> excuse me, with the stove and, uh, gosh, pardon me. I made a cup of tea. I'm doing some elderberry tea just to make sure that I keep my immune system on point. Come over here, Sierra. And then um, made some coffee as well. And both times I did that, it really warmed up the topper because I just kept the windows shut. But the problem with propane is it just kicks out a ton of moisture condensation and I think that's why when I woke up at 2 that it was 
um, iced over it because I'd used the stove periodically throughout the evening just to keep things kind of warm because it got cold quick. Man, it got really cold. It went from 60 degrees down to like 20 degrees in a matter of like two hours. So that's a pretty rapid drop and uh, not one that I want to experience again up here. So that's why I want to take off and go somewhere else. I mean, I know tonight it's not going to be as bad, but it's still going to be cold. And um, the exposure up here, I mean, it's great when the weather's awesome, you know, because it's you've got tons of exposure of, I mean, these views. I mean, <laughs> look around, you know, it's just like you're on top of the world. See over here? But uh, the one drawback to being exposed, and it's a big drawback, is when the weather rolls through, you just take it on the chin. And that can make it pretty miserable. Last night was almost to the point where it was miserable because the wind was blowing so hard that it was just blowing through my topper. And any leak, any air air seam that could get that 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 air could get through, it got through. So hey girl. Yeah, you scared the crap out of me. <laughs> so Monument Valley right there. If you can really see that with the GoPro, since it's like a wide lens and there's not much of a zoom. That's a pretty cool vantage point right there. I've always wondered if there's a way to climb out there. But of course, um, wouldn't want to get stranded and not be able to get back up onto the top of the mesa here. So it's just expansive views. And with these canyons here, like like I was saying yesterday, this is the start of the Grand Canyon. This is Glen Canyon Recreation Area. And this is the this is where it starts, like right over here, and then it goes this way. Goes out in Arizona and into the Grand Canyon, which is amazing. So, all right, let's get out of here. The wind is really starting to kick up. Come on, Sierra, let's go. Here's a look in where we just came from. If you wanted to see all the rocks that we were checking out that had all caved off over there or capped off. And then, you know, this is looking down that cliff over there. And then, you know, way down over there as well. I mean, these, these canyons and caves or canyons and cliffs just go on forever. And it's really impressive terrain, but uh, like I was saying, the one bad thing about this site is you're super exposed. So let's hit the trail and get out of here. I'm feeling super fortunate. I got my permit to visit this area. And as I was driving here, I, I just passed one group of people and that was it. Didn't see a sign of anybody else. And so, uh, make sure my backpack is zipped up. Um, came down here, got to the trailhead. There's no one here. So I'm really excited. This is a site that the BLM has hardened, which means that there's one area where you can climb inside of the ruin. There's like this big foyer area. So we're gonna go over here and I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you, it's incredible. So we're gonna spend about an hour here and then get back on the uh, 4x4 trail and go camp at a really cool area tonight. It has a great view. And uh, we're gonna keep our eye on these clouds because if it starts to rain, I'll get, actually get stuck at this site and I don't want that to happen. And we've got some clouds over in that area right there. So hopefully that's not too bouncy. I'm doing camera work and trying to hike this at the same time. So anyway, let's get to the ruins. All right, so we're currently down the canyon. We made it down the toughest part, which is this little lip right here. Yeah, I kind of jumped down on those rocks that are stacked up. And you come down that, that real steep section right there. So it's a little bit of a nail biter. But once you get down here, you're good to go. Now, as you can see, this is a spillway right here. <clears throat> so the last thing I want to do is get caught when it's raining. And those clouds over there, um, they've kind of looked like they've had rain off and on throughout the day, but I think they're I think they're going the other way. So I think I'm in good shape. Gosh, this stuff is hairy sometimes. It's like you want to stay close to the top, but it's a little bit of a slope. All right, so the main ruin, it's right in front of us here. You can't really see it in the, in the picture, but okay, so there's one right there, that's the main ruin. There's a like kind of like a mud house right there. There's one on the corner right there. And there's one around the edge. Just think about the people that lived here and what it took to, to build something like this. And this complex is, is cool. And you'll see, I mean, we'll, 
We're gonna get right up to it. We're gonna spend a lot of time here. Just keeping an eye on those clouds. And there's nothing behind them. So, I mean, if it does come through and rain just shortly, then I'll just wait it out and I've got some extra clothing. So it won't get too cold, but I think it's supposed to get down to like 30 tonight. And that was down in town. So up here, I don't know, maybe 25. There's a lot of snow on the upper part of the Mesa when I was driving in. I tell you what, it does feel good to be back out on trail though. It feels amazing. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and uh, head on over. It's right there in front of us, center frame. I don't know if you can see it. There's a lot of shadows right now. But I'm gonna put the camera up because uh, it's a little dangerous for me to be hiking with uh, the camera. So we'll conclude over there. It's really cool. You can still see some of the decorative art on the walls and then over here, it's kind of neat, the, <clears throat> the plaster has been kind of removed over the eons and you can see the internal structure of how they built these, these walls, which is amazing. And then you've got over there, you've got like a reed wall where the um, earth has kind of decayed away. And then here's looking inside, same thing. A little bit of degradation and you don't want to touch any of this stuff because even just the oils in the in your fingers can erode this sort of stuff but uh there's signs everywhere in here it says just don't don't enter the internal rooms it's amazing i mean to think that people were just living in here Kind of minimalist lifestyle here, you know, just a little small Adobe one room setup. <laughs> Definitely my style. <clears throat> now this one's pretty cool. This is like, I think it's like three rooms all together. So it's like this little house here. And uh, going into these rooms, just kind of seeing what it's like. It seemed like there was all these passageways in the back. Now these other two, they don't have much of an opening, I don't think. Yeah, there's not much in here. And then going into this one right here, just peeking our head inside. This one's got a little bit of exposure because of the roof on it, which we'll pan up to. The roof has got a little bit of wear and tear, but I mean, <laughs> for 1,200 years old, I'm, I, I, or, or let's see, uh, 900 years old, we're, we're doing pretty good. <laughs> I'd say this is better than modern construction. It's so cool though, you can see like the little, little deals of, <clears throat> little strands of, of like, uh, I don't know what it is, but whatever they would put in there, if it's straw or, or whatever. So coming over here, this is kind of the main port. Well, one of the main portions of the ruin. There's a big, big room right here. These massive timbers, and it's just amazing to think that they've been here for this long. And looking into this room, but the the main section is over there, and that's where we're headed to now. So let's go check this out. Now this is an area where the BLM did harden a site. I want to point out something here, which is really cool. It kind of looks like this is all just, you know, just, just a wall, like, like just natural rock. But you can tell about right here, it's constructed. And so it's like they blended it in with the, uh, with the, the scenery around here. All right, we got to come up here. Now, like I said, this is one of the areas that you can you can technically go into. That's why there's like steps going up here, and they've they've hardened this area. You can see there's actual they harden this to where you can come inside. Now the rooms that you cannot go into always have a little uh, um, a deal like this that says please do not enter. So just make sure you're respectful of those. But what's amazing is that this is a little dwelling space in here too. So this is under the area where we're going to go right now. So they definitely took advantage of every opportunity to utilize space around here. And this is an amazing entrance right here. It's got this wood beams across the top. And then as we come in here, you can see there's a multitude 
of additional living spaces all throughout here. Absolutely amazing. So we're gonna go ahead and hop inside. All right, so we're inside here. This is the room to the right. Right as we were looking in the foyer area here. So you can see there's a little, little hole over there and they built that into the room as like a lookout. And there's another hole that's right there. I don't think you can see it very well. You can see it from the side. And it is said that they use those for arrow openings to defend the area. So here's looking at one of the other rooms. Kind of a similar, just small, you know, little area here. Now this area is really cool. I mean, this is like <clears throat> this is like something you'd see in Vegas, <laughs> like you know, re reconstructing the the days of old. I mean, this is impressive around here, and it's cool to see, you know, the art still on the walls, and then the the uh, wood exposed. And look how smooth this is. I mean, it's still really smooth, which is amazing. So it's just a, just a super impressive area. <clears throat> There's a little hole there that was probably for a piece of wood that eventually rotted out. But you can see the smoke up here. Let me turn on my headlamp. You can see this is really charred up here and that's from all the smoke. And so they were burning stuff back in here for sure. And if we look in here, if we just pop our head in and just look around, here's like the backside construction of these walls. And then looking around, we can see it's a pretty big room. Now, if you look on the floor and if you look closely, you'll see those are corn cobs. This has a massive amount Tiny little corn cubs on here, like maize and stuff like that. So it's pretty cool. It's on the ground. And if you come over here, there's still there's one more room up here, and it's just over in the corner. It's kind of tucked back in here a little bit. So I don't know if this was like the uh, master suite getaway or what, but it's just uh, another room. It's kind of hugged up here. This one has a little bit of a, a taller ceiling in here, so. It must have been nice for the person that was in here. But turn around. Definitely tight quarters right through here. You can see here too, there's all these arrow, these holes for um, arrows. And let's see, there's one there. There's another one right here. There's one that's right here. Another one right there. So they definitely had a way to self-defend in a huge area in here <clears throat> to stockpile resources and then, you know, defend through these different openings that are in the wall here, the outer wall. And then you've got the inner area to hang out and this is where your family can kick it and you guys can be safe and you're, you're good to go. Um, this is a room that's of big interest just due to the fact that it still has all the art on the um, area here. And if you look around over there to the right, you'll see a big circle in the deal, which is pretty cool. For those of you who have been here, you know what that means. But I'm not gonna give away the location of this place. Another thing that's really interesting that I've always noticed is that you can see where the finger marks are. Turn my headlamp off here. Well, actually you can't unless I have the headlamp on. So let me turn all the way bright. That way it won't. There we go. You can see where the finger marks are, where they were pushing the mud into place to make these walls. So it's pretty amazing. And this area is just so incredible. And there's more too. There's more around the corner. So I want to get out there and show it to you because it feels like the temperature is starting to drop a little bit. I'm hoping when that storm's not rolling in. So let, let's go check out these other areas real quick. Another thing I want to point out real quick is how cool is it that they put these patterns in the wall? So you got these big stones and you got these smaller stones that all go in a line. And that's uh, that's on a lot of the different walls that are throughout here. I just think it's cool. It's like a little artistic 
touch on top of making a really incredible residence right here on the middle of the cliff. It's absolutely amazing. There's another little spot of interest. It's like a, a house up there or a room up there and it's two stories. And you can see a little wall to the left, a little wall to the right, right there. So it's a pretty big area up in there and it goes around to the backside here. So let's go, let's go around and I'll show you. And then there's a ruin back here, which I've never been to. I've seen it just from afar, from up here, but I'll have to go back down to the valley floor in order to um, access it. Let's see the back side of the room. Goes right. Right back to here. So it's like right there. So that's a that's a big room. The only thing is I would think when it rains, you're gonna get rained out in there. Because there's a little crevice, that little opening. But down over here, um, I don't know if this is the trail to get there or not, but there's another ruin. There's actually two more ruins around here. <laughs> and uh there's a ruin. I don't know if you can even heck, I don't even know if you can get there. There's one right there and there's one over there. We're gonna try it. I think I think we go up here and just go around. So this seems to be the trail. And if it gets sketch, we'll just, you know, we'll turn around and, and we'll go back. But this seems like a pretty well-defined trail. And we're in the sun. <clears throat> that cloud passed, which is good. That's the one that was causing all the colder weather. Or cooler weather. It wasn't really cold. Okay, well, we're going down now. Right, I'm going to put the camera away. How cool is this to be hiking through all this green? Especially after being in the snow for so long. Alright, the trail is definitely getting faint. That's a net. Hmm. I wonder if I should have stayed high up there. Yeah, that's what it looks like. We talk about an area that just... The trail just puttered out. Oh, this is cool. We got some water over here. Very nice. Very, 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 very nice. Alright, let's see. Yeah, we're on. Oh, cool. It's actually flowing. So this comes from a spring. This would be incredible to get a drink from. Oh, I didn't bring my water purifier with me or else I would. That's cool though. So awesome to see the water flowing through here in the middle of nowhere. Hopefully, hopefully that's not a sign of a flash flood. <laughs> Famous last words. All right, we're gonna turn it off and keep trucking. All right, we made it, and I am out of breath. Oh wow, this is cool. So they got this, let's keep it right here, and the interior walls are plastered, and it's like a, a darker brown. I've not seen that before. So that's really cool. But uh, we got it roped off here, so you can't go inside. So definitely gonna make sure and respect that. Let's go around the corner here. I wanna see if we can peer in from the backside. Man, they used a lot of timber. I wonder if some of that timber is from the ceiling that collapsed. It probably is. They probably took some of that out of there and just put it back behind here. What an amazing place, man. Uh, and they got a view if you come around the corner right here you know there's another house right here and I'm sure that all of this area was built up I mean you can see stone remnants of a foundation you can see like a wall right here you can see this coming out right here anytime you see stone sticking straight up like that that was usually some sort of entryway or wall and so this whole area you can tell was uh chock full of habitation and you wonder like you know over the time how much has how much of a ero has, has erosion eroded away these these ledges you know was it uh were these ledges out much further was it you know how, how was the terrain different that's what i always kind of wonder 
when I come through this stuff. But there's one more ruin over here. Oh yeah, I want to see this one for sure. This looks pretty incredible. Sorry for the incredibly poor camera work. But I couldn't quite get around that. All right, I'm gonna be on the edge here just for a second. Up around. And we're here. Wow. Now this is cool. You can see, okay, so here was the wall that collapsed right there. It just kind of laid over, like it just laid on its side right here. So this whole thing collapsed in. But it's so cool to see this wood and uh, to see the interior of how they built these rooms. Gosh, this is so incredible. I love this stuff. Yeah, look at this room right here. Yo, yeah, what's up, man? Welcome to my, my man cave. Thing. <laughs> it's tiny. I wonder if that was more of just like a storage room. Let's look around the edge here and see if there's anything else. I don't think there is. No. There's nothing really over there, I don't think. Unless there's something I'm just not seeing. But man, what an area. And with this spring down there with that water flowing, I mean, heck. You're good to go year-round, you know? So you wouldn't, uh... You wouldn't need to go anywhere. I mean, you can just chill here, which would be... You're right with me. You know, I'm actually kind of surprised there's... Actually, no, I'm not surprised there's no ruins over there. If there were ruins on that side, they'd never get any sun. So that they'd just be cold all the time. But you can definitely tell, like... Actually, I don't want to step up there. I think this is probably part of a ruin, too. So you can see how these smaller stones are arranged. Whoops. These smaller stones are arranged like this. I was going to step up and say, oh yeah, check this out right here. Because you can see those stones that are aligned in a certain manner. And you can also see in the back there on the wall. You can see like that right there. And that right there. It looks like it was the part of a wall that was coming out. Just like a mud wall that had crumbled over time. Let's go back here one more time before we head out. Well, let's keep on this other side. I didn't do that. I kind of want to peek. Uh, I want to peek the GoPro into those rooms because <clears throat> it looks like there's a yeah, it looks like there's a little bit of a, a cavity back in there. Let's do this real quick. Oh yeah, there's no. Oh, there's a whole nother room back in there. Check this out. All right. I'm gonna do the go go gadget arm here. Extend it out a little bit. Turn this around. Right, okay, so if you see in here, there's entirely another room back in there, and that room looks absolutely pristine. Wow. That's just amazing. So this was like kind of like the other place that we were just at. You know, you got like this outer area and then you have an inner inner area, which is super cool. I mean, look at the size of these timbers they used. They're not small. Oh, they're pretty big. So anyway, all right, let's uh, let's head out of here. We're gonna go back to the truck and then we're gonna go find a killer place to camp for the night. <clears throat> Hopefully we'll get cell reception over there. If not, then we're gonna run, in, run into town tomorrow 
and uh, check on some packages. I got I got to text a friend of mine with my GPS if I don't get service to let her know I'm not going to be in town till Wednesday. So uh, I got some stuff coming in the mail. I got that new drone coming, which is great. So all right, let's jam. All right, all done with today. There's a lot of driving, and I uh, went to the spot where I wanted to camp, but couldn't get a cell reception there. And I need to check on a few things. I checked on some uh, items that are being packaged, or some packages that are being shipped, not some items that are being packaged, some packages that are being shipped, and unfortunately they all got sent back because I think the Amazon locker location that I was using is closed just due to the coronavirus. But got a nice spot here, got a little fire going, just dug a little pit in the sand. Um, I've got the back set up here, ready to rock and roll. The best part is I'm up here above the river, so it's real nice. It's just on this little bluff. This is a free place to camp. And um, come right over here and you'll see, you'll see the river down here. A little bit of trash over there, so I'm going to pick that up before I leave. But coming down here, we've got a nice bend in the river. And uh, there's all these birds that hang out over in this area over here. So in the morning, it's really cool to listen to them all because they start coming up and flying overhead. But um, we're going to just crash here tonight. Oh, here come some birds right now. That's cool. And then they, they did like a, a maneuver where they all split. Come on, let's go this way. But we're going to crash in here tonight. And then uh, tomorrow we're going to wake up and we're going to go up over that ridge over there. And there's some really awesome 4x4 trails that just go on top of all these rocks and you can camp back up in there. And there's some ruins back up in there too. They're pretty small. It's like one room ruins and just some, uh, some uh, rock art. But it's still cool to check out, so that's where we're going to go tomorrow. But tonight we're just going to crash. I'm tired. Uh, I've got the fire going, a little bit of heat. Got some ham here. Going to make a salad. And I've got a Johnny's American IPA. Uh, this is from the Moab Brewery, so that's pretty good. Not bad. Not like my Colorado craft beer, though. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> All right. We're crashing out for the night. Hope you all have a good day.